Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today I'm going to be going over this uh, portable power supply. Now this is more than just a big glorified version of the power bank that you carry in your pocket for your phone. This is actually able to produce AC current. So you can plug in your desk fan, your toaster, your juice maker, or, or whatever, even though you're on the go. So this would be good for like camping, tailgating, prepping, if you're into that. Okay, so now this comes from a company called Inequal. Now, for, forgive me if I pronounced that incorrectly, but I think it's Inequal, so that's what we're going to go with for right now. So Inequal makes this, and there are, there are apparently two different versions. There's the 110 volt and the 220 volt. I ordered the 120, I mean the 110 volt, so I'm hoping that's what this is. I know this says 220 up here, but anyway, we'll get into um, what this is. But it should be the um, 110 volt. Now, if I remember correctly, the 220 volt is a different color. I think it might be like orange or something, but anyway. All right, now how, how do you get this and how much does it cost? All right, so unlike a lot of my reviews, this is actually distributed here or available here in the states so yes it's made in china but it's meant to be sold here in the states and that's kind of obvious when you look at the packaging which we'll do in a bit you're going to see how everything's written out in english all right and as far as where you can get it uh let's just say i just did a quick search online and you're able to find it on that very popular shopping start that starts with an a so all right now let's talk about price um, this, I've seen it kind of range, um, but it seems to be uh, around the $200 mark. A little higher in some cases, a little lower in others, but let's just say 200 to make it simple. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look around the packaging and see the info they thought was good enough to put on the box. All right, so they have the nice picture of the item on the front. Come over here, portable power supply. It's there to safely and portably serve for emergency charging. All right, fair enough. Now we have these little info icons. It's a uh, backup um, power, okay, of course. Solar charging. Now, from what I know, this doesn't have like a solar panel integrated, like some have it in the handle and all that, no. But uh, you can supposedly get a solar panel that you already have and connect it into here to recharge this, so. All right, high capacity, which they claim to be that many milliamp hours. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see. High capacity, again, going down to that. Um, power bank. So, yeah, you can just use it as a regular power bank, you know, plug in your phone into one of those USB ports there, okay. But, uh, all right, then it has an LED torch. I think it actually has more than just one. We'll see that later, but it does have LED lights on it. And it has an LED display panel. And so you can kind of see that there. Um, all right. And not a huge thing, but we can kind of start to see some of the grammatical or... Um, misspellings there. Again, not huge, but all right. Um, this side here, we have the um, specs. We'll come back to that. Just want to see what's on the other side. Other side just seems to be a repeat of the front, which we see. And then, okay, so here's another spec side. Let's see if these are the same. Then, yeah, it looks like these are also the same. So, all right, correction. Uh, the sides with the specs are different. Um, so this side here is the other version um, which is the if we go down here you can see the 220 volt so I'll just go ahead in case you were planning on getting that version here's the specs for that one Let's look at this one here I'll just scroll this by and you can uh, pause the video if you want life circle <laughs> all right and now let's just look at the top yeah okay so what's that all right so overall impressions of the packaging uh, we'll start with uh, i didn't mention this earlier but up top it does have this a uh, cool pull out handle um, and you can see it's made of pretty thick plastic actually and it doesn't break by just it doesn't whiten and crack like some others so it, and it definitely lifts the box so that is definitely handy like that all right so now let's get back to the box overall <laughs> though I do like the image up front that's good I do like the spec sheet and now I have I do like the specs on the box 
we'll leave that there. But what I didn't really appreciate is the fact that, and it took me a while to realize I had to edit in that, hey, there are two different spec sheets. These initially look the same, but if you look closely, as we've already covered, they are for the two different versions. So now let's look up front. You have ATP 220. What? What one? Because the models vary by the last character. What was it? H and L. So what one did I get? So I don't really know. Um, I think that could have been done a lot better. My guess is what they're doing here is that this is general artwork for both of the models. And then it gives you the specs and you kind of have to know what one you ordered. And I don't know, I think that could have been an easy. Um, I know some have a simple, like a box, one they'll put a check mark. <laughs> so there'd be like a box here and you just check. So you got this version, right? I mean, even that would be a little helpful. But anyway, um, factoring that out, everything else I think is done pretty well. And um, so yeah, and the item did get here safely and I don't see any damage to the box. So I guess it did its job. So let's now get to the unbox. All right, so securing it was just this little tab here. Pull that out, lift this up, lift up the second flap. Oh, okay, never mind. So this actually comes down forward, and then the lid goes up. Okay, and there we have okay, some foam to protect the device. It is cut out to the shape of the unit. Here we have a box, probably of accessories, instruction manual, and then the device itself. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the accessories in the manual first. Okay, so here's the manual. Pictures. How to use it with the solar panel. Okay. And this side here is English, and the other side is Chinese. Okay. Now it's for the accessories. Little box. First one is this. So obviously this is uh, for the car. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so this plugs into the the power station and then it comes out as this so oh so you could power your um, devices that would otherwise plug into your cigarette lighter in your car and that came in the little bag the other one oh okay so <laughs> this is going kind of like the other way this plug into the power station and this now plugs into your car cigarette lighter and therefore you can recharge your power station from well by using your car okay and then the last one is here we are so and obviously you use this to power up your portable power station by using the electricity coming out of the wall in your house or office or whatever. I also noticed um, they did send me the correct one for my region, so that's the USA, so they got that right. Okay, um, so now we've looked at the accessories and the instructions. Let's go look at the main unit. All right, so I pulled it out of the box. There was a complimentary cutout, a foam cutout on the bottom, so it was nice and snugly protected inside the box. All right. As you can see, came in a bag. Um, so yeah, let's talk about weight. I'll go ahead and put up the actual weight right there, but I can tell you that there's noticeable mass here. I mean, it's not super heavy, but it is not light. But again, hopefully that'll turn into prolonged run time, right? All right, so on this end, there's uh, where you're gonna plug your device. It looks like we have a combo um, outlet, so there's the main blades like you know hell let's try this just since we have this sitting here obviously do not you know charge it this way that'd be yeah but just to see if the thing actually plugs in so you know put it upside down stick it in all right so you can see it does actually accept this now this is only two prongs but i assume if this was a grounded i.e had the third prong I think that would probably go in what in that hole there okay 
So that's that end. We do have a little, probably a status LED right there. Okay, on the front. Okay, on the front, we have a USB port uh, two here. Is just I guess normal USB. This one, USB port one, it has the blue. So it was that USB three, I believe. All right. And then we have. Okay, this is a button. Um, I don't know if it's coming up. I'll try to zoom in here. Hold on. Okay, so we have that button there. That's your LED panel. One is illuminated. Right now, of course, it's off. Okay, then you got your power button, a USB Type C port. There's your DC out. So, if, yeah. And then, so we'll go to this side here. Now, there are your LEDs. <laughs> it looks like a face, doesn't it? <laughs> Two eyes, the nose, and of course the mouth. I wonder if that was intentional. But anyway, so yeah, we have the LEDs there. Looks like we have some pretty big LED bulbs in there. And then, um, I'm assuming, which is probably a fan down there. And then this one here, the nose, we'll call it, is the DC in. Okay, and then let's look at the back. Oh, well, before we go there, there's a button up there for... A, most likely the flashlight or the LEDs has the flashlight icon. Okay, then over here, look at that. We have a, what looks to be maybe a COB um, LED panel. So cool. And just look at the bottom. Yeah, some rubber feet. And there we are. All right, so I'm glancing through the manual real quick here, and I just wanted to point out a few things. So um, let's talk about the USB port. I know I mentioned the blue one earlier and then also the Type-C and all that. Um, so this device here it, it says supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0. So and you can get a max output of 2.1 amps out of there. So that's a bonus. And then the other thing, um, this might be kind of self-explanatory to some, but I just want to make sure I cover it to be thorough. So out of our accessories here, this one, and of course this one, you're going to plug that into the DC in. And then this accessory, you would plug in here, and that would take power out of the um, power station and supply it to whatever uh, accessory that you would plug into this. So, yeah. All right, so I went ahead and charged up the unit, got it up to full power. Uh, of course, you use the little display window there, and it tells you when it's fully charged with the little battery icon being uh, fully lit and not blinking. Okay, so after that happened, that took, you know, I left the charge overnight. And actually now, it's 17 days later. Now, I purposely put this delay in there. So I charged up the full capacity, put it away for 17 days to test passive drain. So does the battery just drain on its own if it's not doing anything, just sitting on the shelf or in your bag or whatever, closet. Okay, so I'm happy to report, according to the little display window here, if it's not lying to us, I've lost no charge in that time, or not enough charge for it to display anything other than that full battery icon. All right, now it's time to test out the lights on this device. If you remember, we have the two primary lights here, if you're going to use it like a flashlight, and then if you're reading a map or whatnot, you have these lights on the back. Okay, so I'm going to do basically two tests with this. The first test is more just a visual and, and so that you can see how bright the thing is. And then the other test I've actually already done and that is to get actual numbers. Okay, so let's we'll start with the first test, the one that you'll see here. And how I do this test, if you haven't seen my videos before, is I'm going to shine this uh, light at the door. Okay, now the door, based on the color it is and what it's made of, it soaks up light. Now, it might seem counterintuitive that I'd be shining light at something that soaks up light if I'm trying to show you how bright it is. Uh, I could just shine these things straight at the camera, but that really wouldn't tell you much because it's just going to overload the camera sensor. And all you're going to see is a big blast of white. But how bright? You don't know. You just know it's bright, right? So, a better idea is I'm going to shine it at the door. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, for the door test, I'm just going to use the primary lights, okay? All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lights in the room. All right, so got the lights off. The light you see here is just a little lantern. I only have that on so that the camera could actually focus on the door. 
So I'm going to go ahead and move the lantern behind me. It's going to get dark in here, right? And now I'm going to actually go ahead and turn on the, here, just to show you, see, there it is, the main unit in my hand there. Okay, I'm put that behind, the lantern's behind me. Now I'm powering on the device. To do that, you push and hold this button. And there you are. So you can see, even with the door soaking up light, it is still quite bright. I mean, it's actually pretty intense. All right, turn it off, push and hold the button. There you go. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the map reading light, let's call it that. All right, so I'm actually going to turn it away from the camera. So you don't, and then I'll take the little hand lantern, move it behind me. And just make sure I push the right button, okay? So now to turn on the map reading light, you push the main power on the device. Once that comes up, then you go ahead and push and hold that button again, and then the light comes on. So there you are. So you can tell this one has a different uh, color uh, temperature to it. This is a little more of the warm or soft glow or whatever you want to call it, as with the other one had that icy white color. So, but there's actually another feet or another mode on this particular light. If you push the button one more time, it switches to a higher intensity, again with the same color temperature but brighter. And then you push it another time, and it goes off. All right, so I promised you numbers, and I'm going to give you some right now. So testing these here, the primary uh, lights for this device. I went ahead and used my lux meter. Yes, I said lux meter, so you'll have to convert this to lumens if you want. And if you do, I should give you the setup. All right, so the target, which is in this case the lux meter, was two feet away from this. I shine the light on the lux meter at a perpendicular angle. Now, the, the lux meter has a target, or where the sensor is, and that sensor is a one inch diameter circle. Okay, so now let's get to the, just how bright it is. So the ambient light in the room, I had it at 13 lux. That's just so I could see what the heck I was doing. And once I turned on this guy and shined the light on the meter, it went up to 5,046. So yes, it got bright. All right, so now let's cover the um, charging using DC power, um, namely these two ports right here. And as you can see, um, there's the USB 1 has the blue and the USB 2 has the black. So USB 1 is the fast charging um, port. So in order to test that out, I pulled out a device, um, in this case, the LG V20. Still in great condition, I might add. Okay, but anyway, the reason I pulled it out is because it, this phone came um, with Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0, so I thought it'd be a great way of testing this. I used my phone, obviously, and also the supplied um, charging cable that came with the phone. And I went ahead and plugged it into both of these ports and had a pro an application running, which is, in this case, Ampere, and it gave me the following. All right, so... Well, it was charging in the black port. I uh, received a number of 470 milliamp per hour from that application. And also on the upper right hand of my phone screen, in the sub screen, because this phone kind of has two screens. Anyway, there's an icon up there, a regular charging icon. All right. Then when I went ahead and plugged the phone into the blue um, port, I got this. 770 milliamp per hour uh, recharge rate and yes the quick charge icon did appear so that right there is two confirmations that these are doing what they said both the number from the mil the ampere application and the icon um, from my phone that lets me know what kind of charging it's doing so that worked all right so let's go ahead and get started testing out this portable power supplies ability to charge other devices First up, we're going to use this laptop here. I, you can see I have it in fact connected, and that fit in there quite easily, so no problem there. This, by the way, is the supplied um, power brick, or whatever you want to call it, power adapter, for um, this laptop. So, all right, um, nothing changed there, and if everything works, I should just be able to hit power on this, and we should see this thing start to charge up. All right, so i got it powered on here. 
And you can see there, if it's coming up, let me zoom in. All right, there we are. So you can see I got Wi-Fi, and it is, in fact, charging. There's the icon saying so. Also, you can look here, and you can see that this is has the indicator saying that it's working. So I just unplugged it, and you can see the icon has changed. So it was, in fact, working. All right, so stepping it up a bit, I have the toaster. And um, this is a good time to um, go ahead and talk about the um, power plugs and plugging things into this device. So on um, the first thing I tried, which was the laptop, it didn't matter because the, the plug coming out of its adapter, the both prongs were the same. However, on this plug and other plugs like it, you'll have um, the prongs be slightly different. One will be a little wider. So I plugged the wider prong into the side here that said neutral on it. It said it has an N written on it. So um, wide side to the N and you should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this on. And for the AC power, by the way, I don't know if I said this earlier, but if not, I'll just say here, you see this button right here, the one that looks like a kind of like a power plug on it, it has like a little icon of a power plug. You push and hold that in for like, three seconds or something until it turns on. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, push and hold. Okay, there we go, AC mode. Have the light over there. Now let's try this out, uh, push and Okay, that's actually interesting. So what happened is, the second I tried to activate this, this, the red light went off, as you might have noticed. And it switched over to DC power. Oh, so it's like it exited AC mode. Hmm, I wonder if this is just requiring too much of this. And that might be a safety feature. Okay, well, cool. Even though my toaster didn't get to work, oh well. All right, so let's try this desk lamp. All right, so again, with the wider side in the end for neutral. And okay, and uh, powering it on. Okay, so this guy's ready, and now let's see if it works. Yay! So, all right. All right, so this one might be a tall order, but we're going to see if it works. So this is a Bionair um, high-speed air circulator fan, and um, here we go. We're going to try this out. So, turn in on this. Okay, AC mode's active. Got the red light there, if you can see. There you go. And I attached a piece of uh, paint. Let me see, is that in shot? Yeah. There. Can you see? No, pull it a lot. There you go. All right, so I put a little piece of paper up here, so tape, paper towel, so if it turns on, you'll be able to see it. You'll probably be able to hear it too, but anyway, just so there's something visual to look at. Um, all right, here we go. Well, I'll be done. It does work. Can it do the higher speed? Let's see. And yes, it does. And still looking good. Turn off. All right, so before we get to the conclusion, I wanted to go over a quick disclaimer, and it's regarding my use of this item. That is to say that I've only used it for making this review. So what you saw in this review is basically how much I've used it so far. Now. Therefore, I can't tell you how many years it'll last, how many power cycles you've got out of it. If you use and abuse it, how long will it last? I don't know. Now, if you're asking why didn't I put it more through its paces and then come make the review, I was actually thinking of doing that. However, I wanted to get this review out relatively quick so that you see what this has to offer and you can make your decision on if you want to try one out for yourself. However, keep in mind, if there is any notable thing that comes, if it stops working after a month or anything like that, I will be definitely be making a follow-up to this video. So in conclusion, would I recommend this item? Based on what I've seen so far, yes, I'm actually liking it. Most notably, I'm liking the shape and size of it. Um, most devices like this are usually big rectangles or cubes. I don't know, you could say it's just easier to make them that shape, but I think there's a, a portion of it is just because square, big, chunky means power, and I think that might be a marketing thing. However, this shape actually I find works out better. Just, I mean, obviously the ergonomics. And one thing I've noticed with this is that because of the way it is, 
I can pick this up and put it under my arm as you would like an American style football. And it's really easy to hold that way. So even if you don't want to devote a hand to the handle, you can tuck this under your arm and use your hand for whatever else you're trying to carry. So yeah. Um, so I'm liking it so far and I will be making use of it. 